As we've studied the life of Joseph with Scott Pauling, we've learned that this study isn't necessarily about Joseph, but instead about the God who was with Joseph, even in the darkest of circumstances. As you look at your own circumstances through the eyes of faith, do you recognize God's presence? Oh, that we could learn to live in the presence of God. Be sure to stay tuned after today's study to learn more about Scott's book on the life of Joseph entitled, The Lord Was With Joseph. At some point in the race of life, you start looking less at the starting blocks and more at the finish line. And that's not a bad thing. In fact, it really narrows some things down for you. It brings some clarity. It simplifies life because you start considering how you want to finish. We've come to the the finish line in Joseph's story. It's recorded for us in Genesis chapter number 50. In our last study, we looked at the final verse of his life where the Bible says, So Joseph died, and we're all going to die. If Jesus doesn't come, it's appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. So Joseph died, being in 110 years old. And we have no idea how many days we're going to live. Uh, The Bible says that our times are in God's hands, so it could be a long life. It could be a short life. Compared to eternity, it's all short. Life is a vapor that appears for a little while and vanishes away. So we'll die. We'll live out the days that God has given us. And then his story concludes this way, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Now that is from man's perspective. We understand that. So He's buried here, but his spirit, the eternal soul, went to be with God. And so we see on this side of the veil, God sees on the other side where he welcomes the believer into his presence forever. This is the moment that we are all living towards. All of life is moving to that moment. So if that is true, Genesis chapter number 50 helps us to see what Joseph did in the closing years of his life. Now, most of the emphasis in Genesis is placed on the early days of his life and then on the what people call the prime of his life. I like what my pastor used to say. He said, the prime of life is any time in life when you're in the center of God's will. And I love that. So the prime of life is not just the middle years or the, uh, the years when you can do the most uh, productive work and physical labor. It is really every season that is given to God But we've come now to the closing years of his life, and this is what Joseph concentrated on. Let's begin in Genesis chapter 50 and verse number 1, where the Bible says, And Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. Do you remember the previous chapter, Genesis 49? Jacob gives his final blessing to all of his children. He, He blesses Joseph's children as well, the grandchildren, and now he's dying And the Bible says in verse number 2, And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. And the physicians embalmed Israel. And forty days were fulfilled for him, for so are fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him threescore and ten days. And when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spake unto the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you, in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die. In my grave, which I have digged for me in the land of Canaan, there shalt thou bury me. Now therefore let me go up, I pray thee, and bury my father, and I will come again. And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury thy father according as he made thee swear. And Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, and all the house of Joseph and his brethren and his father's house, Only their little ones and their flocks and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond Jordan, and there they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation. And he made a mourning for his father seven days. Now let's pause just a moment, because at a glance we we see this funeral, we see the memorial service, we see the season of mourning, And we're tempted to think what an awful thing this is. But this is the natural progression of life. Uh, We we live our days and we go to meet God. And I want to give you just this meditation, if I may, before we read any further in Genesis 50. And it is this. We should not try to shelter young people from the reality of death. 
We should not try to, to live ignoring the fact that we're all going to die. In fact, I would argue that it was actually a good thing for Joseph to ponder uh, the, the fleeting uh, nature of life and the temporary nature of life with his father's passing because it helped him to concentrate the last days of his life and get ready for that moment when he would go to meet God. You see, every time I go to a funeral, every time I go to a cemetery, I'm reminded of something. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Someday it will be my turn. Someday it will be yours. And instead of that uh, being some awful thought, that should rather be a joyful thought. We're going to meet God and also a sobering thought. I want to make the rest of my life count. We pick up the story again in verse 11. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning to the Egyptians. Wherefore the name of it was called Abomezrim, which is beyond Jordan. And his sons did unto him according as he commanded them. For his sons carried him into the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought with a field for a possession of a bearing place of Ephraim the Hittite before Mamre. What do we learn from Joseph's example in the first 13 verses of Genesis 50? Uh, let's make this application today. Uh, as we get to the, to the second half of life, so to speak, where we're thinking on all the memories to this point, and then we're thinking about loved ones who are leaving us, and we're thinking about the rest of our life, and then what really matters for eternity. One recommendation I would give you is this. Honor those who have instructed and influenced you. Do you realize what Joseph is doing in the opening verses of Genesis 50? He is honoring his father, Jacob. Now, ponder this just a moment, because Jacob was far from a perfect man. Jacob was a man with with lots of failures, and Jacob was a man that had plenty of disappointments, and I have no doubt that even Joseph had some disappointments uh, looking at his father's example. And yet, Jacob was the man who had put God's truth in him before he was 17 years of age in such a way that Joseph could stay true to God all of those years in Egypt. Friend, don't betray the trust or waste the stewardship you've been given. In fact, in the previous two chapters, Genesis 48 and 49, what was Joseph doing? He was receiving counsel from an old man, from his aging father. Don't forget the aged people. You know, in our culture today, uh, such attention and admiration is given to young people. But in Eastern custom, in ancient culture, uh, the, the gray head, what the Bible calls the hoary head, was honored uh, because of their example and their faithfulness. Don't forget those people. And don't forget the investment they have made in your life. Remember the truth you've been taught. Think of the baton of faith that you've been handed And by the grace of God, if you want to keep God's blessing on your present and on your future, don't forget your past. It's very easy for young people, at least younger people, to forget an aging generation and the eternal truth those people have given to us. So go back to first principles as you near the end. As you're thinking about the the end of the race, go back to the beginning of the race and honor those who instructed you and rededicate yourself to continue in the same truth of the presence of God. As believers, we long for the day that we see the Lord and forever will be in His presence in heaven. But friend, you and I do not have to wait until then to live in the presence of God. In Joseph's life, we are reminded that the Lord desires that we stay in His presence throughout each day and in every circumstance. This was the open secret of Joseph's life. Scott has a tremendous resource that will equip you to live in God's presence. His book on the life of Joseph entitled, The Lord Was With Joseph. Visit enjoyingthejourney.org forward slash Joseph to download the free digital book, access the audio book, or purchase the hard copy version. Our prayer is that this will inspire your daily walk with the Lord.